today I'm going to talk to you about my interests in uh, volcanology and I'm going to introduce you to my thesis of uh, at Medicine Lake Volcano in Northern California. Oh, cool, thanks. <laughs> Sorry, slide. Um, so there's two main reasons why to study or for my study. Uh, the first reason is that volcanic eruptions are extremely dangerous and uh, disruptive. Um, sorry. Uh, da, da. Uh, so specifically, my study focuses on basaltic eruptions, and um, basaltic eruptions can produce uh, lava flows explosions, uh, wildfires, and release deadly gases. Uh, so a recent event or recent eruption of a basaltic lava flow was in 2018, uh, Kilauea, Hawaii. And um, this is a before and after picture from 2017 to 2018 of a fissure that opened up right in the Lahani Estates. Um, on the right over there is a satellite image and a map. Uh, the purple is the older, older uh, lava flows and the pinkish colored, red colored uh, is the 2018 eruption. And you can see the extent and distribution of the lava flows. So my study uh, is focused on documenting volcanic deposits and their hazards and uh, to better educate and prepare ourselves for future options. So the second main point, or second, in, second main reason, sorry, uh, for my uh, study is that um, Medicine Lake, my study area, is in between uh, two major uh, tectonic and geologic provinces. On the west, we have the Cascadia subduction zone uh, just off coast, which produces uh, this range of volcanoes known as the Cascadia Volcanic Arc. And it goes from uh, British Columbia up north all the way down to Lassen Peak in the south. And then on the eastern side, you have the Basin and Range uh, Tecton er, Province, which is a region of extension and stretching. So it's basically like taking a piece of paper and pulling on it really hard. And eventually that piece of paper will either rip or break. And when in, in, uh, in the province, uh, this ripping and breaking is, a, is what we call a fault. And, um, and we can, and those faults are uh, roughly north-south trending. And you can uh, trace the faults through Medicine Lake Volcano. So the black lines are the faults and then Medicine Lake is outlined here in red. Uh, so my study is examining the pre-eruptive histories, so how magma is stored in the crust of uh, seven vents uh, that erupted 12,000 years ago. And this, uh, like uh, Brandon said, in a, a magmatic flare-up event, which is a lot of uh, eruptions in a short period of time. Uh, so my main questions that I'm trying to ask are uh, how are the deposits from these different vents similar or different in terms of eruption volume, style, uh, magma composition, and mineralogy? And then I'm also trying to uh, at, at, or answer uh, uh, what does the magma plumbing system at this basin and range uh, Cascadia boundary look like? Is it uh, a simple plumbing system like on the right? which is easy to monitor and predict, or is it this more complicated uh, plumbing system that's hard to monitor and predict? Uh, so for our preliminary work, we looked at uh, location, ages, and volume. Uh, on the left here, we have a graph of uh, eruption age versus eruption volume. Eruption age is in thousands of years. Uh, the oldest is on the bottom, and the youngest is on the top. And then uh, volume is in cubic kilometers. And what we see are these pulses of low to high uh, eruptive volumes uh, with a period of no eruptions, and then another pulsation of low to high, 
and then uh, another period of no eruptions, and then another low to high. Um, on the right is the location of all my seven vents. Uh, the stippled line in the center is the topographic rim of Medicine Lake Caldera. And as you can see, uh, there's really no rhyme or reason as to age or uh, distribution of my vents. But, yeah. Um, so after doing the preliminary work, we went into the field to look at how these lavas look and try to determine their style and how they erupted. Uh, so to do this, uh, we saw some really amazing features. Uh, we saw lava tubes, uh, lava sickles, hornitos, uh, tree molds, tumuli, agglutinate uh, ramparts, and uh, ropey surfaces on the flows. And basically what all these textures tell us is that it erupted uh, very fluid and hot. Uh, we also collected uh, samples from all these vents and we came back, oops, sorry. Okay, sorry. Um, so we came back and uh, what we want to do is, or what we want to do is uh, basically f fingerprint each rock as an individual and determine what it is. Uh, so to do this, we take our rock sample, we crush it to homogenize it, um, and then we add a flux to help melt it. Uh, and then we cook it at 1,000 degrees Celsius for about 20 to 30 minutes. We take it out, and it's this beautiful incandescent uh, orange-ish color. And as it cools, it turns into like a beautiful little um, green glass. And uh, the green glass is what gets analyzed. And what uh, comes back is a, the geochemical composition of what, exactly what that uh, what that rock is made out of. Uh, so then we take this data and we plot it against, or we plot the elemental data against each other. And uh, so this is a plot of silica versus titanium. And each point on the plot is a, a separate rock sample. And the symbology represents the different vents. Uh, so uh, as you can see, uh, we see a compositional variation within the vents itself. That's like the spreading um, or the spreading distribution of the points. And then we also see a uh, vent distribution or sorry, vent variation. So the ribbon flow, which is the gray triangles and the valentine, which is the green squares, uh, plot separate from all the other 12,000 year old vents. Uh, we also looked at it um, spatially from east to west, so, uh, sorry, or west is on your left and uh, east, or, yeah, east is on the right. Um, and we see that there's a clump of 12,000 year old vents that are lower in titanium on the east, or western side, sorry, and um, uh, the higher titanium elements are on the west. Um, we see this with a lot of other elements, too, that we plot. And this suggests that uh, the Western vents, uh, Ribbon and Valentine, have a different crystallization history. Okay. Um, so, we, so now that we know what the rock and the vents look like as a whole, we dive in deeper and look at the mineralogy. And to look at the mineralogy, uh, we have to create thin sections. So we take our rock sample and we mount it to a glass side, shave it down to roughly a couple of microns thick, uh, look at it under cross-polarized light, and we get these beautiful images of colorful minerals that we can determine uh, textures and run analysis on. So uh, I haven't done the analysis yet for the mineral minerals, but essentially what they do is they tell, they're like, the minerals are, themselves are a little packet of information um, that tell you about how the magma has changed over time underneath the earth. And um, so I'm doing analysis next week and uh, hopefully we'll get some temperature depth and some cool other data. <laughs> um, so, 
So what we know so far is that in terms of volume, style, composition, and mineralogy, um, the All My Seven Vents uh, show a range in uh, volume and composition, and uh, the vents themselves are also compositionally different. Um, and then in terms of the plumbing system, so far it looks like it's a very complicated plumbing system. <laughs> So <laughs> it's more like the bottom pictures, um, but hopefully we'll get more information later. Um, yeah. oh. <laughs>